Well, hey y'all, and welcome to the Hillbilly Chicken Ranch. I'm Susan, your hostess, and we have corn, corn, corn. Now, we started collecting this in 2023. We didn't go through all of it from last year, and I've got another bag over here I found in the freezer from this year. So we're going to get this canned up today, uh, just regular old corn, to put on the pantry shelves. This is hashtag freezer clean out 24 home canning 24. So I got out early this morning. I've got it actually defrosting in my sink. As you can see, it's starting to come apart. And um, I'm going to get this parboiled and then we're going to get it into our canning jars. You can uh, raw pack this, but I noticed that there was a tip on the side that says there may be some browning. So I decided I would parboil it just to ensure maybe that I won't get that browning when I cook this. Um, it will can for a long time in a pressure canner. It's pressure canned. So we're going to get this started once all of this is defrosted. It's still frozen in this bag here. I may have to set it in some water to defrost it a little bit. Well, y'all, we're in my kitchen. I pulled out my ball, complete book of home preserving. The recipe I will be following is on page 388. Right here is the whole kernel corn. I have approximately two gallons of corn or eight quarts of corn. Um, I could do the raw method, which would you would pack your kernels loosely in a jar, but because my kernels are cold, I'm going to do the hot pack method. For every cups of kernels, we're going to add one cup of boiling water in a stainless steel pan. Combine corn and water. Bring to a boil over medium heat. Reduce heat and boil gently for five minutes until heated completely through. Ladle hot corn into your liquid and liquid into your hot jars as directed in step three on page 385, which says one half inch headspace, one half teaspoon salt per pint, one teaspoon per quart. We're going to water bath this uh, in pints for 55 minutes, and if I was doing quarts, you would do it for 85 minutes. Now, it has a little tip on the side of this that I want to tell you about. Um, the corn, the sugar content in young ears and sweet varieties of corn may cause browning. This will not affect the safety of the product. Before using jars, inspect them carefully for any chips, cracks, fractures, discard any imperfect jars. Now, the old timers would add something to their corn to keep it from turning brown. I've done a little research online. There's not a lot out there to tell you what is safe, what is not. I thought about citric acid uh, because it brightens the food up, but there's also uh, fruit fresh or fresh fruit preserves by Mrs. Wages. I got this bottle for 50% off. It contains sugar, aerobic acid, and azorbic acid. And I think azorbic acid was, is what they used to use years and years ago. And so this will retain the color and the texture of your corn. I'm gonna use it in here uh, it says one teaspoon of Mrs. Wages fruit fresh, fresh preserver to one cup of syrup. Prepare and pack your fruit according to the recipe. So for every cup, I'm going to use a teaspoon of this. I don't think I'm going to use as much because this is corn. Um, I might do half a teaspoon just to try it out and see if it helps to preserve the color. And then we will know for sure after it is canned. So let's get in my kitchen and let's get to canning. Uh, this is my canning adventures, my home canning 24. So I've had my corn out of the freezer defrosting and I forgot to say this is hashtag freezer clean out 24 as well. And it is a full bowl. Now this bowl usually holds between six to eight quarts of Vegetables, uh, 10 to the rim, I would say, pretty much for sure. And um, I'm going to get this into my stock pot. We're going to add our water, and I'm going to add some of the citric acid to the water 
so that it can uh, be working with the corn as it is heating up. So I'm going to add in eight cups of water. In my second cup, I'm going to go ahead and add in my um, fresh fruit preserver. And I'm going to add in four teaspoons. Because remember, I said I was going to do a half teaspoon per quart of, um, or per cup of water instead of doing the eight. So we're just gonna try it at this. And if this works, we will know that that's a good amount to add. If it doesn't work, I will up the amount the next time I can this. This is my very first time canning um, corn, so we're gonna, see how this goes. I'm just going to give that a stir to get it incorporated into the water because I don't want it sitting in the bottom of my I want to make sure all of that is in there. So that should do the trick. I'm just going to give this a good stir. So basically, it's enough water to almost cover your corn. And I'll show you what I have in my pot. So there it is in the pot, and you can see some of the milk off of the corn has released. This may actually be more like a cream-style corn. There is a um, piece of corn silk I just picked off the top of that. And we're going to get this boiling. Once it comes to a boil, we're going to let it simmer for five minutes. Then we're going to jar it up. All right, my corn is ready to go. It smells delicious. We're gonna get that lid off there. I don't need that for now. I'm gonna go ahead and put in one half teaspoon of canning salt per jar. If you're on a salt-free diet, you can omit the salt. It is not the preservative in your canning jar. It's just for flavor. And I'm gonna get rid of the rest of my salt. I don't need that either. Get my funnel ready, and we're gonna start canning this up. My jars are hot, my canner is hot, and my liquid is hot. So if you're doing a cold can, everything would be cold. If you're doing something hot with, like this, you wanna make sure your jars and everything are hot. So we're gonna start filling our jars up. And I always like to temper them just a bit just to be sure that they're at the same temperature as the food that's going in there. Something my mother taught me years ago, uh, just to make sure that everything is hot and we won't have any busted jars. As a home cook and canner, uh, I do test out things from time to time. You will see that on some of my videos. I do alter recipes when I'm cooking. I make it my own. And everything seems to turn out very good. So I don't know how many, exactly how many pints I'm gonna get out of this. There's two gallons, so that's 16 cups per gallon. So I'm assuming I'm gonna get 16 pints. But that doesn't always add up. Well, my camera went down, y'all, but I debubbled my jars and I checked my headspace on them. Now I'm going to clean the rims 
it is a half inch headspace on these. So you're gonna wipe your, the rim of your jar with vinegar and you're gonna apply your lids and your bands. You're gonna center them on your jars. So we're gonna start with the first three and I pulled up three lids so that'll work out just fine. So you don't wanna to touch the gasket. And it's four fingers to center. I know a lot of people don't do this step, but I do because I wanna make sure that I'm going to get a good seal on my jars. And then I am going to drop the band, but I'm also gonna place my finger on that lid so that it will be on there securely. My handy antique tool, I don't think they make these anymore, I wish they did. Uh, I'm gonna crank this down I'm going to back off. That helps to seat these canning lids. And then I'm going to three finger tight that lid. And I always do it with my left hand. I'm right handed um, because that's the weaker hand and I know I won't over crank it. And into the canner is going to go. And first jar is done. We're going to get this canner loaded. We'll come back when these are done. I'm going to allow this to vent for 10 minutes. That means a good head of steam will be coming out of the vent pipe. And then I will apply my weight and then we will time this for 55 minutes. After that, I turn off my heat source and I allow it to come down to temperature and it will come down to zero. You'll not hear any more jiggling. This button will be flat, but before I even apply this, I always look through the peephole on my canning lid to make sure that it's not obstructed. And I also uh, oil or grease my gasket and on the rim of my canner. Per um, Presto telling me to do that. So I'm going to be doing that with this. I've already done it. And we're going to get all of these jars canned up. Always wait for the jiggle before you set your timer on how long you're going to be processing your canned goods. You want a good steady flow on that jiggle. And so I will be setting this for 55 minutes per pint. If I was doing it for quarts, it would be 85 minutes. What do you think, y'all? We got 15 pints of corn. I think it looks pretty good. The last six jars just came out of my canner. I uh, don't see any browning or discoloration. Now that is the peaches and cream corn, so the color doesn't look as bright as some of the corns that you get in the store. But I think it's gonna be very, very delicious. Yum, yum. Let's look in my oven and see what else is going on. Ooh, it's hot. Looky there, folks. I got pumpkin roasting in my oven. I have to keep an eye on the top one because it is right up there, so close to the top. It's still bubbling in the jar, y'all. Look at that. Beautiful corn. This is Amish corn that we bought this year. We know that it is organically grown. We know it's a hybrid uh, type of corn. I'm going to leave those on my counter overnight. And in the morning, I'm going to check the bands. I'll remove the bands and wash my jars, check the seals, get them dried, labeled in, into my pantry. Y'all, always let it sit for five minutes before you remove it from your jar. Take your lid off your canner and just kind of sit it cockeyed a little bit. Let that excess steam get out of your pot. That helps to keep the jars from siphoning. This is hashtag freezer clean out 24 and home canning 24. My canning adventures are done for the day. I've got pumpkin to process and then I'm going to call it a day. It's been a busy day in my kitchen. How about yours? Thank you, friends, for watching, and may you be fully blessed.